Hi, this is Lala here with Book Club, all cozy with my blanket, ready to read. We're going to focus today on Judy Bloom. Judy Bloom is one of my favorite authors when I was a young girl. If you notice, she writes books for children of all ages. Um, she has picture books and story books for grades K through 3. I know one of my favorite ones in that bunch was The Pain and the Great One about a brother and sister relationship, and it is really funny and teaches a really good lesson. So if you have siblings, you definitely need to read that one. Then she has her fudge book collection, which are great for grades three and four. And then she has her young adult and middle grade collection, which is great for grades five and up. So today, I chose the book, Judy Bloom. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. Because it is a perfect book for preteen girls, ages nine through 12. It's a book all about the changes of a girl, and it's uh, handled in a very funny, hilarious way that um, all girls will love. It is a realistic fiction book, and if you notice from the cover, it is definitely an updated version. You could tell from the text because this book was written in 1970, um, and they've updated the cover. Why, may you ask, did I pick a book from 1970? Because it is a classic. It is for all girls and all decades, and especially because the movie is coming out the end of April 2023. So you definitely want to read this book before you see that movie. Let's look at the synopsis or summary on the back of the book. As we could see, Margaret Simon is the main character. She likes long hair, tuna fish, the smell of rain, and things that are pink. She's just moved from New York City to the suburbs and is anxious to fit in with her new friends. They swear they tell each other everything. First bras, first kisses, first periods, everything. But some things are just too private to talk about, even with your friends, and especially when you're the new girl. Lucky for Margaret, she's got someone else to confide in, someone who always listens. As we could see, that someone is God. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the book. And we could see she dedicated it to her mother. And I'm hoping after I just read a chapter that you are motivated to get your own copy and read along with me. Or you can just listen. So I'm going to start with chapter one. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. We're moving today. I'm so scared, God. I never lived anywhere but here. Suppose I hate my new school. Suppose everyone there hates me. Please help me, God. Don't let New Jersey be too horrible. Thank you. We moved on the Tuesday before Labor Day. I knew what the weather was like the second I got up. I knew because, <laughs> believe it or not, I caught my mother sniffing under her arms. She always does that when it's hot and humid. I know, embarrassing. To make sure her deodorant's working. I don't use deodorant yet. I don't think people start to smell bad until they get at least 12. Oh, I beg to differ. It's different for everyone. So I still got a few months to go. I was really surprised when I came home from camp and found out that our New York apartment had been rented to another family and that we owned a house on Fairbrook, New Jersey. First of all, I never even heard of Fairbrook. And second of all, I'm usually not left out of important family decisions. But when I groaned, why New Jersey? I was told Long Island is too social, Westchester is too expensive, and Connecticut is too inconvenient. So Farbrook, New Jersey it was where my father could commute to his job in Manhattan, where I would go to public school, where my mother could have all the grass, trees, and flowers she ever wanted, except I never knew she wanted all that stuff in the first place. The new house is on Mor Morning Bird Lane. It isn't bad. It's part brick, part wood, 
The shutters and front door are painted black. Also, there's a very nice brass knocker. Every house on our street looks a lot the same. They're all seven years old, so are the trees. I think we left the city because of my grandmother, Sylvia Simon. I can't figure out any other reason for the move, especially since my mother says grandma is too much of an influence on me. It's no big secret in our family that grandmother sends me to summer camp in New, New Hampshire and that she enjoys paying my private school tuition, which she won't be able to do anymore because now I'm going to a public school, which of course is free. She even knits me sweaters that have labels sewed inside saying, made expressly for you by grandma. And she doesn't do all this because we're poor. I know a fact, for a fact that we're not. I mean, we aren't rich, but we certainly have enough, especially since I'm an only child. That cuts way down on food and clothes. I know this family that has seven kids, and every time they go to the shoe store, it costs a bundle. My mother and father didn't plan for me to be the only child, but that's the way it worked out, which is fine with me because this way I don't have anybody around to fight. Anyhow, I figured this house in New Jersey business is my parents' way of getting me away from my grandma. She doesn't have a car. She hates buses, and she thinks all trains are dirty. So unless grandma plans to walk, which is unlikely, I won't be seeing much of her. Now, some kids might think, who cares about seeing a grandmother? But Sylvia Simon is a lot of fun, considering her age, which I happen to know is 60. The only problem is she's always asking me if I have boyfriends and if they're Jewish. Now, that is ridiculous because, number one, I don't have boyfriends. And number two, what would I care if they're Jewish or not? That's the end of chapter one. Since that one's so short, I'm going to go on to chapter two. We hadn't been in the new house more than an hour when the doorbell rang. I answered. It was this girl in a bathing suit. Hi, she said. I'm Nancy Wheeler. The real estate agent sent out a sheet on you, so I know you're Margaret and you're in the sixth grade. So am I. I wondered what else she knew. <laughs> it's plenty hot here, isn't it, Nancy asked. Yes, I agreed. Oops, sorry. She was taller than me and had bouncy hair, the kind I'm hoping to grow. Her nose turned up so much I could look straight up her nostrils. Nancy leaned against the door. Well, you want to come over and, under the and go under the sprinklers? Back then, everybody played in the water sprinklers in the front lawn because most people couldn't afford pools because that was only for the rich and famous back then. Now it's different. I don't know. I'll have to ask. Okay, I'll wait. I found my mother was with her rear end sticking out of a bottom kitchen cabinet. She was arranging the pots and pans. Hey, Mom, there's a girl here who wants to know if I can go under her sprinklers. If you want to, my mother said. I need my bathing suit, I said. Gads, Margaret, I don't know where a bathing suit is in this mess. I walked back to the front door and told Nancy, I can't find my bathing suit. You can borrow one of mine, she said. Wait a second, I said, running back to the kitchen. Hey, Mom, she says I can wear one of hers, okay? Okay, my mother mumbled from the inside of the cabinet. Then she backed out. She spit her hair out of her face. What did you say her name was? Um, Wheeler, Nancy Wheeler. Okay, have a good time, my mother said. Nancy lives six houses away, also on Morning Bird Lane. Her house looks like mine, but the brick is painted white and the front door and shutters are red. Come on in, Nancy said. I followed her into the foyer, then up the four stairs leading to the bedrooms. The first thing I noticed about Nancy's room was the dressing table with the heart-shaped mirror over it. Also, everything was very neat. When I was little, I wanted a dressing table like that, the kind that's wrapped up in fluffy or gandy skirt. I never got one though, because my mother likes tailored things. Nancy opened her bottom dresser drawer. 
When's your birthday, she asked. March, I told her. Great, we'll be in the same class. There are three sixth grades, and they arrange us by age. I'm April. Well, I don't know what class I'm in, but I know it's room 18. They sent me a lot of forms to fill out last week, and that was printed on one of, all of them. I told you we'd be together. I'm in room 18, too. Nancy handed me a yellow bathing suit. It's clean, she said. My mother always washes them after a wearing. Thank you, I said, taking the suit. Where should I change? Nancy looked around the room. What's wrong with here? Nothing, I said. I don't mind if you don't mind. Why should I mind? I don't know. I worked the suit on from the bottom. I knew it was going to be too big. Nancy gave me the creeps. The way she sat on her bed and watched me, I left my polo on until the last possible second. I wasn't about to let her see I wasn't growing yet. That was my business. Oh, you're still flat, Nancy laughed. Not exactly, I said, pretending to be very cool. I'm small boned is all. I'm growing already, Nancy said, sticking her chest way out. In a few years, I'm going to look like one of those girls in Playboy. Well, I don't think so, but I didn't say anything. My father gets Playboy, and I've seen those girls in the middle. Nancy looked like she had a long way to go, almost as far as me. Want me to do the, your strap, she asked. Okay, I figured you'll be real grown up coming from New York. City girls are supposed to grow up a lot faster. Did you ever kiss a boy? You mean really kiss on the lips, I asked. Yes, Nancy said impatiently. Did you? Not really, I admitted. Nancy breathed a sigh of relief. Neither did I. I was overjoyed. Before she said that I was beginning to feel like some kind of underdeveloped little kid, uh, well, I practice a lot, Nancy said. Practice what, I asked. Kissing. Isn't that what we were talking about, kissing? How can you practice that, I asked. Watch this. Nancy grabbed her bed pillow and embraced it. She gave it a long kiss. When she was done, she threw the pillow back on the bed. It's important to experiment. So when the time comes, you're all ready. I'm going to be a great kisser someday. Want to see something else? I just stood there with my mouth half open. Nancy sat down at her dressing table and opened a drawer. Look at this, she said. I looked. There were a million little bottles, jars, and tubes. There were more cosmetics makeup in that drawer that my mother had all together. I asked, what do you do with all that stuff? It's another one of my experiments to see how I look best. So, when the time comes, I'll be ready. She opened up a lipstick and painted on a bright pink mouth. Well, what do you think? Um, I don't know. It's kind of bright, isn't it? Nancy studied herself in the heart-shaped mirror. She rubbed her lips together. Well, maybe you're right. She wiped off the lipstick with the tissue. My mother would kill me if I came out like this anyway. I can't wait till eighth grade. That's when I'm allowed to wear lipstick every day. Then she wiped, then she whipped out a hairbrush and started to brush her long brown hair. She parted in the middle and caught it at the back with a barrette. Do you always wear your hair like that? She asked me. My hand went up to the back of my neck. I felt all the bobby pins. I used to pin my hair up so my neck wouldn't sweat. I knew it looked terrible. I'm letting it grow, I said. It's at that in-between stage now. My mother thinks I should wear it over my ears, though. My ears stick out a little. I noticed, Nancy said. I got the feeling that Nancy noticed everything. Ready to go, she asked. Sure. She opened a linen closet in the hall, handed me a purple towel. I followed her down the stairs and into the kitchen, where she grabbed two peaches out of the refrigerator and handed one to me. Want to meet my mom, she asked. Okay, I said, taking a bite out of the peach, out of my peach. She's 38, but tells us she's 25. 
Isn't that a scream? Nancy snorted. <laughs> Miss Wheeler was on the porch with her legs tucked under her and a book on her lap. I couldn't tell what book it was. She was suntanned and had the same nose as Nancy. Mom, this is Margaret Simon, who just moved in down the street. Mrs. Wheeler took off her glasses and smiled at me. Hello, I said. Hello, Margaret. I'm very glad to meet you. You're from New York, aren't you? Yes, I am. East side or west? We lived on the West 67th near Lincoln Center. How nice. Did your father, does your father still work in the city? Yes. And what does he do? He's in insurance. I sounded like a computer. How nice. Please tell your mother I'm looking forward to meeting her. We've got a morning bird lane bowling team on Mondays and a bridge game every other Thursday afternoon and a, oh, I don't think my mother knows how to bowl and she wouldn't be interested in bridge. <laughs> she paints most of the day, I explained. She paints? Mrs. Wheeler asked. Yes. How interesting. What does she paint? Mostly pictures of fruits and vegetables, some flowers, sometimes flowers too. Miss Wheeler laughed. Oh, you mean pictures? I thought you meant walls. Tell your mother we're making our carpools early this year. We'd be happy to help you, her arrange hers, especially Sunday school. That's always the biggest problem. I don't go to Sunday school. You don't? No. Lucky, Nancy shouted. Nancy, please, Miss Wheeler said. Hey, Mom, Margaret came to go under the sprinkler with me, not to go through the third degree. All right, if you see Evan, tell him I want to talk to him. Nancy grabbed me by the hand and pulled me outside. I'm sorry, my mother's so nosy. I didn't mind, I said. Who's Evan? He's my brother. He's disgusting. Disgusting how, I asked, because he's 14. All boys of 14 are disgusting. They're only interested in two things, pictures of naked girls and dirty books. Nancy really seemed to know a lot. Since I didn't know any boys of 14, I took her word for it. Nancy turned on the outside faucet and adjusted it so that the water sprayed lightly from the sprinkler. Follow the leader, she called, running through the water. I guess Nancy was the leader. She jumped through the spray. I followed. She turned cartwheels. I tried but didn't make it. She did leaps through the air. I did too. She stood straight under the spray. I did the same. That's when the water came on full blast. We both got drenched, including our hair. Evan, you stinker, Nancy shrieked. I'm telling. She ran off to the house and left me alone with two boys. Who are you, Evan asked. I'm Margaret. We just moved in. Oh, this is Moose he said, pointing to the other boy. I nodded. Hey, Moose, said, if you, if you just moved in, ask your father if he's interested in having me cut his lawn. Five bucks a week, and I trim, too. And you could tell from the prices that this was written back in the 1970s. What did you say your last name was? I didn't, but it's Simon. I couldn't help thinking about what Nancy said that all they were interested in was dirty books and naked girls. I held my towel tight around me in case they were trying to sneak a look down my bathing suit. Evan, come in here this instant, Miss Wheeler hollered from the porch. I'm coming, I'm coming, Evan muttered. After Evan went inside, Moose said, don't forget to tell your father, Moose Freed, I'm in the phone book. I won't forget, I promise. Moose nibbled a piece of grass. Then the back door slammed and Nancy came out, red-eyed and sniffling. Hey, Nancy, baby, can't you take a joke? Moose asked. Shut up, animal, Nancy yelled. Then she turned to me. I'm sorry. They have to act like that on your first day here. Come on, I'll walk you home. Nancy had my clothes wrapped in a little bundle. She was still in her wetsuit. She pointed out who lived in each house between mine and hers. We're going to the beach for Labor Day weekend, she said. So call me on the first day of school and we'll walk together. I'm absolutely dying to know who our teacher's going to be. Miss Phipps, 
who we were supposed to have ran off with some guy to California last June. So we're getting somebody new. We went, when we got to my house, I told Nancy if she'd wait a minute, I'd give her back her bathing suit. Oh, don't need it in a hurry. Tell your mother to wash it and give it back to me next week. It's an old one. I was sorry she told me that, even if I've already guessed it. I mean, I probably, I wouldn't lend a stranger my best bathing suit either, but I wouldn't come right out and say it. Oh, listen, Margaret, Nancy said, on the first day of school, wear loafers, but no socks. How come? Otherwise, you'll look like a baby. Oh. Besides, I want you to join my secret club, and if you're wearing socks, the other girls might not want you. What kind of secret club, I asked. I'll tell you about it when school starts. Okay, I said, and remember, no socks. I'll remember. We went to get a hamburger. We went to a hamburger place for supper. I told my father about Moose Freed. Only five bucks a cutting, and he trims, too. No, thanks, my father said. I'll be looking forward to cutting it myself. That's one of the reasons we moved out here. Gardening is good for the soul, my mother beamed. They were really driving me crazy with all this good for the soul business. I wondered when they'd become such nature lovers. Later, when I was getting ready for bed, I walked into a closet thinking it was the bathroom. Would I ever get used to living in this house? When I finally made it into bed and turned out the light, I saw shadows on my wall. I tried to shut my eyes and not to think about them, but I kept checking to see if they were still there. I couldn't fall asleep. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. I'm in my new bedroom, but I still have the same bed. I'm so It's so quiet here at night, nothing like the city. I see shadows on my wall and hear these funny creaking sounds. It's scary, God. Even though my father says all the houses make noises and the shadows are only trees, I hope he knows what he's talking about. I met a girl today. Her name's Nancy. She expected me to be very grown up. I think she was disappointed. Don't you think it's time for me to start growing, God? If you could arrange it, I'd be very glad. Thank you. My parents don't know I actually talk to God. I mean, if I told them, they'd think I was some kind of religious fanatic or something. So I keep it very private. I could talk to him without moving my lips if I have to. My mother says God is a nice idea. He belongs to everyone. That's the end of chapter one and two. I hope you're going to get your own copy and interested in this book and tune in next time for the next chapter.